And good morning, it's Saturday the 22nd of February 2014. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom Talk, a weekly live chat show, boys and girls. You'll be able to talk uh, uh, to me live as well a little bit later on when we open the phone line. And we open the Skype as well. Well, the Skype's on there. If you ever want to send a message, give us a little call. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, okay? C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Well, um, a beautiful day outside. As I've been saying for the last few weeks, we haven't had a winter here in the UK. It's really, really nice. Outside at this very moment, the cat, Katie the cat, okay, who has recovered from her illness. She's much, much better now. Katie, you know, she goes to the door. She's gone to the door this morning when I got up, went downstairs. She had her breakfast, then sat by the back door, which means, Chris, please open the back door for me. She walked out there, as cats do, you know, like they own the place. Well, they do. We are, of course, servants to our own cats, aren't we? Cat owners all over the place will know exactly what I mean. We are... Our own cat's servants. They tell us to do something, and we do it. And this morning, she wanted the, um... Uh, oh, we've got a, got a Skype call in already. Let me just pick up the phone there. Now, who's this? Uh, Big Sam Jackson. Good morning, sir. How we doing, baby? Good morning. Where are you, Sam? Wait, what? Where are you, Sam? This ain't none of your goddamn business. Pardon? <laughs> well, why are you calling our exciting little show? You know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in France. Quarter pounder with cheese? Huh? Have you anything What's to say? What's the matter? What's the matter when? You're not answering my question. What was the question? You know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in France. Quarter a pounder with cheese in France. No idea. Royale with cheese. Uh, it's a what? Royale with cheese. Something with cheese. No, I'm not getting that. It's your accent. You know why they call it that? Why do they call it that? The metric system. Magic system. Thank you, Sam. No idea what that was about, to be honest. But there we are. Shall we carry on? <laughs> Marge has noticed that my monkey has a nice sunflower. Yes, I've got a little sunflower next to my monkey today, uh, which which sings a tune. Oh, we're walking on sunshine. Oh, and don't it feel good? There we are. That's my little singing sunflower. That, that will actually go on and on for a while. Unfortunately, I haven't worked out how to actually stop it yet. I've had that quite a few years. Anyway, as I was saying, we are indeed our cat servants. She's gone outside. She's sitting in the sun, looking very happy. So there we are. That's Katie. So she's much, much better. Thanks for asking. Um, what was I going to tell you about something about the cat? I can't remember what I was going to tell you now. Uh, well, she's finished her antibiotics and nothing else has happened, so I'm quite pleased about that. Now, uh, so the sun's shining, it's like a spring day, the cat's happy, I've got up and literally bounced out of bed this morning and I've no idea why. I've no idea why. And I'm sitting there having my breakfast. Now, as always, the same breakfast every morning, I have a Dorset, what is it, Dorset cereals porridge with honey. Very nice. Check it out from Waitrose. Waitrose sell that. Um, I don't know if I've got that in any other supermarkets, but definitely Waitrose sell that. Dorset cereals, porridge with honey. It's in like a, a brownish coloured box. Really nice. So I'm sitting there having it, and then I heard, I heard the letterbox rattling, boys and girls. I heard the letterbox rattling. Okay? Oh, by the way. Uh, those of you that uh, watch the show, we have people that just listen and people that just watch. Uh, you'll have a quick look at the Barry Manilow photo today. He's in a white jacket. That's a February photo, which will, of course, change next next week. Because is it next week? Hang on a minute. I might have that wrong. One moment. No, next Saturday will be the 1st of March. OK, so this is the last opportunity you'll get to see the February one. Would you like to see the March photo? No. No, you stop getting excited. You're not having it all at once, dear. 
You know, this program is like a is like a 200 course dinner. We feed you a little bit each week. Don't want to have it all at the same time because you get fat and ugly, just like my sister. OK, so, <laughs> so please don't ask for it all at once. Now, two envelopes have arrived, boys and girls. Two envelopes. On the front of the envelope, it says front row productions. Regular listeners and viewers to the show will know that I'm a huge Barry Manilow fan. I have seen him now five times. Once at the O2 in London. Once at the O2 in London. Once in Las Vegas, which was the best, the best show, I think, out of all of them so far. Once in New York. Great show. Lame audience. I'm sorry. Lame audience in New York. Just want to sit there and watch a show? Probably enjoyed the show, but I think the word is lame. Didn't get up and dance like we do at all the others. And uh, more recently, of course, in Florida, which was fantastic, because at the Florida one, I'm now a sort of a member of the Barry Manilow fan club, and I've started getting to know people, you see. Lovely, lovely people. Uh, Angela, there's Mary, there's um, another Angela. Oh, uh, who's the lady in Birmingham? Oh, I can't remember. But I've started getting to know people. And it's wonderful. You know, you know go to these concerts. Oh, you can't sit there on your own. No! It's wonderful, wonderful. All these ladies start talking to you. Anyway, so Barry Manilow is coming to the UK again in May. He's all over the place. Quite a few concerts in uh, London. I think Birmingham, Glasgow. Uh, there's one in a football match in Norfolk somewhere. Can't remember. Anyway, uh, have a look at it. Barry Manilow. Just type in Barry Manilow concerts and you'll find where they are. Um, so I've ordered these front row tickets. Um, and this time I'm going to take my niece because she's been to see him already with me once at the O2 a couple of years ago. And she loves him. She loves Barry Manilow, my niece, who is at the moment heavily pregnant. OK, so I'm going to be taking her either to the first or the last concert, depending how the baby's doing, you know, in her tummy, because she may or may not have had it by then. I mean, <laughs> can you just imagine? Halfway, because she, she stand up and dance as well, the same as me, right? Can you just imagine halfway through the concert, she stands stand there dancing and her waters break. <laughs> I wonder what Barry would do. He'd probably start singing her a song and comforting her. That That's the sort of man he is, isn't it? He'd... <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a suitable song that um, that Mr Manilow would sing her. New York City, even now. Is there anything song with babies or children or boy or girl in it? I don't know. <laughs> Imagine having your baby halfway through a concert. Would it stop? You know, maybe they could, maybe they would have medical people there that would allow them to actually deliver the baby in the presence of Barry Manilow. How awesome would that be? It would have to be called Barry, wouldn't it? After the great Manilow, it would. Wendy says, get on with it. <laughs> I am getting on with it, Wendy. I am getting on with it. Oh, yes. His concerts are in Wembley, Cardiff, Southampton, Ipswich, Glasgow, Manchester and the O2. If you're not familiar with Barry Manilow's music, have a listen, OK? But let me just tell you, going to the concert is completely different to listening to his music. The atmosphere is totally electric. And even before he's sung a note, he just appears on the stage and the crowd go absolutely wild. They really do. Please try it. You know, you don't have to sit in an expensive seat at the front or the, you know, that, that front section. Even if you were, like, up in the gods, you know, you, you won't see him as well as I would. But you still get the atmosphere. The first time I saw him, I was right up in the gods at the O2. And most of the time, he was a little speck on the stage. And I had to watch the big screens. But still, I was there. And, and it was absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. What, what's Simon want now? Good morning, Simon. He says, do you often take customer service calls from Burger King live on air? I don't know what that was about. 
Burger King. Thank you, Simon, on the Isle of Wight. Um, uh, we'll have to talk to you about flooding later, Simon, I think. Um, I want to be somebody's baby. There we are. That's a Manilo song. You can sing that while my niece is giving birth on the floor. <laughs> Shall I film that for one of my shows? No, maybe not. <laughs> Let's open an envelope. There are two envelopes here. So, as I was saying, I'm taking my niece... Either on the first or last concert. And I'm taking my two aunties, who have never seen him, uh, Auntie Brenda and Auntie Rini, um, uh, uh, both their uh, husbands, my uncles, uh, have died in recent years. So I'm taking them out as well. So depending where the baby's falling, sort of, or not, as the case may be, that's where my niece will come to and where the aunts will fit around her. So here we go. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, my God. Here are the three tickets for the Monday the 26th show. Shall I read you the seat numbers, Wendy? Shall I? Shall I love it? R block A2. That's in the centre. Block A2. Row A. Seat 19. 80, sorry. Seats 18, 19 and 20. Check this out, Wendy. Look. Three tickets! Ha <laughs> ha! Mr. Barry Manalo, I'm coming to see you. We're coming back so I can love you the way I used to love you long ago. He doesn't sing that. If he's doing the same concerts in Florida, uh, which I think he'd probably be doing, he won't be singing that one. But three tickets there. Let me just show you. I'll show you one of those tickets. Oh, yes, three there. That's in one envelope. So what's that for? Monday the 26th of May. Actually, I must get some cover for my karaoke nights on these days. I must. I like to arrange things early. Don't never leave things to the last minute when it comes to work. Only when it comes to home things. And here's the other envelope here. Lovely. Just a moment, please. I don't have a. Do I have a? I should have a letter opener, really. Oh, damn things broken now, isn't it? Here's the other one. Here's the other one. And here's the other one. Uh, oh, not such good seats, but... Oh, I don't know, actually. Wembley Arena. Now, I don't know where these seats are, um, Wendy. Can you, could you look it up for me? Have you got one of those map things? Row A3... Sorry, block A3. Row 1. Seats 35 and 36. What's that look like? Is that more on the side, that one? Uh, not quite sure. So there are my tickets for the front row Man and O concert. I am I am stunned and excited, all at the same time. My tickets have arrived. Thank you, Wendy. Can can you have a look at the um? Or does does the Wembley do the seats change? Is there like a map of seats or something like that? Thank you, Wendy. Oh, she's going to look for me. Shall I tell you that again? So I've got an idea that I know the O2 ones, that's in the middle. So the Wembley ones, it says block A3, row one, seats 35 and 36. So if you could have a, have a little look for that up for me. All right. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy has gone straight to work there. So once again, get a chance, go and see Baron Mallow because he's fantastic. All right. Marge. Joined in by Skype this morning, morning March, who says, oh, who's also sent me little flowers by Skype. So thank you for that, March. Thank you for that. Um, March wants to know, what would you do if Jesus came back to Earth doing a Manilow concert? Well, get him to sing a song, I would hope. Presumably he knows all the Manilow songs. And quite honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed when I go to church on Sundays. I haven't got any of his songs. I mean, the hymns, they are very, they're very nice. You know, don't get me wrong, they're very nice. You would have thought at least someone had put hymn-type words to Manilo music, wouldn't you? I think some of our Manilo fans, you need to write to Barry and ask him to write a few hymns for our church. I mean, the old ones are all right, but they're all starting to sound a little bit tired. Do you know what I mean? It needs, <laughs> it needs some of the Manilo magic. To, to, to go in on those 
on those hymns and, and, and spruce them up a little bit. Maybe a little bit of a cha-cha or something like that. Or you could spruce, spruce the old uh, uh, church up at the same time. A couple of palm trees either side wouldn't go amiss, would it, eh? You could have beach parties at the church where everyone comes in beachwear. Maybe they should do that. Maybe they should do that. Would that bring more people into church, think, having beach parties and perhaps, you know, I don't know, cooking nights and things like that? And various different... I mean, we get the same wine all the time. That's the only thing. There's never a choice. It's always, <laughs> it's always the same wine coming out of that cup, isn't it? You didn't, don't get a choice of which wine would you like? No, it's just the one wine out of a cup, which we all share, which I find rather inhygienic sometimes. I mean, how do you know, you know, someone's got one of those cold swords or herpes on their lip? And then they have a little and then you have a drink as well. Honestly. Plastic cups, that's the way to go. Ah, good. Wendy says A3 is the middle block. I am in A32. Excellent. Are you coming on those? Are you there at those at that date, Wendy? Um, what is it again? Tuesday the 13th of May. That's the Wembley one, isn't it? Are you there at that one? I do hope so. You're going to meet either, either my niece or one of my aunts and myself as well. All right. Now, you can join in, boys and girls. You may join in uh, by... Just a minute. Hang on a minute. Just turned on and you've been rabbiting on for 45 minutes already. No, I haven't, Ma Matthew. I start at 12 o'clock. The show starts at 12, right? But we actually go on round about 11. Usually there's like this test tone. I can play it for you. There's a little test tone. Okay. That, that goes on for half an hour to allow me to make little setting adjustments and things like that. Then there's some music that plays for half an hour and then it gets to 12 o'clock and I start. Do try and keep with us, Matthew. Do pay attention to what's going on, dear. All right. So that's the um, that's the that's all about the manalo. Let's let's have a little quick here look here. I'm doing them all. Wendy's going to all the concerts. Oh my god, that's fantastic, fantastic. Because it'll be a little bit different at each one, won't it? Um, I asked last week. <laughs> Yes, try and try and pay attention, Matthew. Matthew's in Croydon, which is probably half of the, of the problem. Most people in Croydon, I'm afraid, they don't get up until you know late afternoon. This is early for Matthew. Yeah. Croydon. Well, quite frankly, I don't know why they didn't do that TV series Benefit Street from Croydon. To be honest, you know, because that's the sort of people that are, that live in Croydon. Unless you're in uh, uh, Purley. Purley's the posh part of Croydon, but I gather they've been flooded out, haven't they? Dear me. Uh, floods on the Isle of Wight. Now, Simon, are you around to give us a quick call? I wonder. Let's have a look if he's there. We want to talk to Simon about uh, floods on the Isle of Wight. I'll, I'll wait for you to um, uh, call me if you're around, Simon. And if you fancy a chat about that. If not, that's fine. I won't ring you unless, um, unless you're, you're quite busy there. All right. Um... Wendy says, can you send links through Skype? Yes, you can. Just just highlight, click and paste. All right, my darling. Uh, we got an email here because I was asking last week, are there many people that just listen? OK, rather than watch the show and listen. Now, we've been going for, is it eight years? I think about eight years now. I've been sitting here talking rubbish now for eight years, boys and girls. I know. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? And you're still there. I can't, I can't believe it myself. <laughs> Although I do like, you know, one of my one of my little things I like to do sometimes in the morning is 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 to actually put one of my my own shows on my television downstairs and I watch it, which is a little bit pleasurable. We've been going for about uh, eight years, as I say, um, but the first five years were audio only, and I was asking. Um, if there was only anyone that just listens now, and as a letter has arrived, which I'll read you in a bit, uh, from Kat, who's a regular listener. Meanwhile, on the Skype this morning is young Simon from the Isle of Wight. Hello, Simon. Oh, it's young Simon indeed. Yes, I've always, I've always got time for you, Chris. Thank you, Simon. I do appreciate it. I just wish I had a bit, a bit of time for myself. I'll have to turn my back on you, though. I've twiddled a little knob and got rid of your volume, but I'm still watching you speaking. Oh, is it's that wise? Good. Yeah, that's... 
all the all the mouth movements will be out of um out of alignment. What's the word? Out of sync. I think is the correct word. <laughs> oh, very professional. I can tell you're in the industry, dear. <laughs> it's been a while, Simon, hasn't it? How are you? How's your daughter and all that? Yeah, it's a combination of things, really. I'm normally sort of weighed down with the... Well, I say weighed down with the drudgery. It's a terrible thing to say, but I'm normally um, in Newport and Shania's normally doing her violin practice that she does on a I, Saturday. And I, think I, I think I upset her during the week because uh, I, I, I said someone else was the youngest listener and it is, in fact, your daughter, isn't it? Oh, yeah, well, she's a teenager. It doesn't take a lot to upset her, bless her, as much as I love her. <laughs> is she 16 or, 16 or 17, isn't she? Uh, she's 17 now, and that's um, at sixth form now, at the sixth form part of the school now, doing... Uh, oh, so when uh, oh, when's she 18? When she 18? Uh, October, so a while away, yeah. OK, no, there's there's a young lad that watches as well, Brandon, and he's 17 as well, so I'm not quite sure which one's the youngest. It's either her or him, one of the two. Ah, well, pretty close by Sam's list. Yes. So tell us, um, we, we didn't really hear... Any news, I can't remember hearing any news at all about um, floods on the Isle of Wight. So uh, what what did you get there? Uh, we haven't had a huge amount of problem with it. Um, last Friday, which wasn't, the weather wasn't very nice to uh, put it mildly, uh, Cowles, which right. is, which is um, where the red jet, the red funnel red jet catamaran comes in. Oh, that yes. Was, is that, that the one that comes over from Portsmouth? No, that comes from Southampton. South Southampton, Hampton. sorry, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. What comes uh, from Portsmouth then? Do you still have... You don't have a... Um, oh, what's it called? You don't have a hovercraft anymore, no? Yes, yes. We, we have a hovercraft that goes from Ryde to South Sea. Right. A, another catamaran that goes from Ryde Pier Head, so you have to get the train or walk up the pier to get okay. it, and that goes to Portsmouth. Oh, right. And I know there was something also, from there, yeah. Yeah, also we've got Fishbourne, Portsmouth Car Ferry and Cows... Southampton car ferry. So, we, yeah, we've still got most of the historic routes going, as it were. Yeah, good, good, good. But, yeah, last Friday night, evidently, um, I was listening to someone on one of our radio stations who was saying that uh, they were playing a gig in one of the pubs in Cowes. Yes. And they, they were told to get out of the pub because um, the high street in Cowes is very close to sea level. Oh, um, right, so yeah. But, I mean that 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 wasn't that that wasn't horrific, and it's not unusual really um, to have flooding in cows. All, all very unpleasant for the businesses and what have you. Yeah, yeah. So, no, we haven't had a huge amount of problems with flooding, and the main problem we've had that some of your listeners um, might have heard of, because I think it even made Sky News, was an area that's about a mile and a half away from me called the Undercliff, right. and they've had really really severe land slippage. There's about eight or possibly nine people now that have had to abandon their homes and the poor is that, things. I don't, I don't is, that in, is that into the sea? It's very close to the sea. Um, yeah. it, it's on a, it, it's fairly close to a cliff top, but the, the slippage hasn't literally slipped into the sea. Yeah. It's more, um, I don't know, a good few thousand yards inland from that, but it, it's yeah. more just um, a huge block of land that slipped. That, right, um, yeah, yeah. Actually might end up in the sea, but that, that it's not unusual around there. It's not unexpected because it's been slipping around there for centuries. Well, that's so that, a worry, that, isn't it? I, I just noticed someone someone uh, on the phone is trying to call in. Uh, you won't be able to call in, I'm afraid, while I'm already on a call, all right? Because there's only there's not, no operators here, I'm afraid. It's just me sitting here on my own. So um, if you could just wait until uh, I've finished chatting away to uh, uh, young Simon about the floods, and then you can call in whoever that is on the phone. It might be Mary, actually, in Camden. I think it is, actually. I recognise that number. Anyway, Simon, so... Um, uh, how many houses have actually slipped into the sea, or, or have they nearly sort of? Well, well, yeah. It's been sort of um, factually correct. There's been enough sort of hysteria in the media around there as it is. The houses are still standing, and so they haven't. It's not like some of the dramatic pictures you've seen um, from the mainland, where you've actually yes. seen bungalows actually topple over the cliff. Right, uh, but not not safe to stay in anymore. No, I mean, properties are fairly close to the coast, but it, it's just the movement that's. Um, potentially yeah. making them structurally unsound. And, and so while it's not a great surprise, your heart's got to go out for those people because I can't well, see them ever, ever moving back into those houses. No, They're I mean, you, the out. thing is, when the, the, not mountains, what do you call them? Cliffs. When the cliffs go in, even if your house is, like, still standing on the edge, you, you couldn't, I mean, that would just wouldn't feel safe, would you? 
No, 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 you wouldn't, would you? I, so, of I, course, I, I and of course, are these are these houses like owned by people, bought outright? Are they? I would imagine so. Yeah, because they're quite nice houses. But uh, one of them's quite, um, well, I say a modern bungalow. It's is a modernish bungalow. Yeah. Um, and the other are quite, I would imagine, Victorian sort of mm. houses. They're nice, nice houses. Um, but uh, there was a big um, geotechnical thing going on there to try and save the road. It was quite an important road for all the coaches going through, right. for the tourists. But I would imagine that would be um, abandoned as well. Now, I don't know. I'm not a surveyor. Well, the road? But I would imagine that road would never run again. Mm. Well, you can't build it up. How could you do it? You, you just can't do it. Oh, it costs, costs an absolute fault. What you'd be doing is literally building a mountain, wouldn't it? That's right, yeah. Not yeah, possible. So that's the big sort of... Um, story on the island really sort of uh, mm. over the past sort of few weeks and I say very sad because uh, so those you know, those those people with the houses would they have been like insured or uninsurable you're never going to sell the house you've just lost lost the house haven't you and, and the money that goes with it you know Chris I really don't know the, the, the trouble is there is it's quite a well-known subsidence spot I mean touch wood I live in Ventnor. That's just, I say, a mile and a half away. Yes. And although I've got insurance from my place, a lot of insurance companies on the mainland see the Ventnor postcode and and run a mile. Just won't insure you for subsidence. Oh, really? Evidently, evidently that's why Ventnor's called Ventnor because the term vent is a, um, I don't know, some sort of um, geographical term for um, fishes in the ground. Evidently. Terrible. So that's how really. the town gets its name. Terrible. Hmm. So, as I say, a thought goes out to them. I say, let's just hope many years ago they, um, yes. they were insured. Yes, so, I mean, stuff. your your water problem was, was more from the sea rather than lots of rivers, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, as I say, uh, uh, thankfully, um, it, it wasn't too bad. When you look at the troubles they've had in the West Country, we seem to have fared very well, really. Yeah, yeah, very bad down there in uh, uh, Somerset and Cornwall and Devon. Um that little, little bit, that little leg that sticks out into the sea, isn't it? Anything that's on that little leg. <laughs> it looks so tiny, you know, when you look at it on the map. But, of course, you know, it's much wider than it looks on the map. But Land's End and all down there, dreadful. But, um, you know, we've had a really nice day here now. Anyway, Simon, lovely to talk to you, sir. Yes, I'll let you go. So it's nice to take part. As I say, uh, Shania always religiously listens to all your uh, little daily videos and what have you. Yeah. Um, and so it's nice to take part because I'm normally busy doing other things. But, oh, uh, I like I'll doing the, the old daily videos. Sometimes the ideas are a little bit hard and coming, but I usually find something to chat about. <laughs> I won't overexpose myself, dear. Nice talking to you. <laughs> See you, Simon. <laughs> Thanks for calling, mate. Bye-bye. There we are, Simon, on the uh, uh, Isle of Wight there, telling us all about those um, dreadful floods that they've had there. In their case, the sea. You know... And uh, I think I've, I'm sure I've read somewhere before that the island is actually sinking, sinking slowly into the sea. Well, we've got a phone call now. Uh, let's go to London. And who's on the phone now? The only Mary from Camden. I thought it was Proud Mary. Leicester look back in the city. Rolling, rolling down the river. Well, that's a proud Mary, isn't it? Proud Mary keeps on burning. Oh, she is burning. Have you got me on in the background there, Mary? Oh, yes, I do. Could Sorry, you just turn I, that I, down, I'm my darling? I've always wanted to say that boy. to someone. Could you turn the radio down, please? <laughs> I turned you off. Well, I turned you down. <laughs> Morning, um, Mary. How's life? Life is great. Um, no flooding in Camden. The window no, is open. No flooding where you are, is no? open. I've been weeding. And I have just had a victory with a particular um, phone provider. Oh, yes. Which one? Oh, I can't mention that. Don't tell there. me. It's, is it three by any chance? Oh, Oh, I could oh. tell you a story about them. I would never go near them with a barge pole. Oh. Absolutely dreadful I, customer service. What happened I to you, tell decided, us? I just decided, right, they've been harassing me four times a day. Yeah. And then when I go, go through the security <laughs> questions, they say, oh, well, your date of birth does not match what we have on our records. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's your fucking problem then. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't swear. Um, and they've been harassing me oh, yeah. for months 
about this dongle thing that my son bought. And yes, he is did. that for the mobile internet, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. he's away at school and he needs his dingle dongle, whatever. Dingle dongle. <laughs> and I've been, um, as some of your listeners know, you know, going through cancer. I've been sitting in the hospital on a drip, and they have called me oh, so many times. And the nurses are saying to me, "Are you okay, Mary?" And I'm like, "Yes, I'm fine, except for this bleep, bleep, bleep." But um, I went for it today, and I said, "Right, I just, I, I don't care anymore." <clears throat> If push comes to shove, I will pay for the contract till the end of February next year because you people are making my life a misery. Why, why do they keep ringing you, Wendy? <coughs> why do they keep ringing me? Oh. Because my darling son took the contract out for 24 months. Oh, right. <laughs> and then I have some jobs for us telling me, well, you did not inform us that the dongle wasn't working. I said, I have informed you time and time and time again. Uh. I said, look, I will pay for this month and then we'll take it from there. Whether I, I said, it's not worth my while getting a lawyer <clears throat> because of that costs too much. Yes. And I really, you know, I can't be bothered going through all that palaver over something so stupid as a firm providing us with faulty goods, replacing them, and then the next lot was faulty as well. I said, life's too short. And he said, well, yes, we can terminate your contract. That will be £155 on top of... <clears throat> 20 pounds that I was willing to pay today and I went um, apoplectic so, so, so again t- tell, me, tell me why, why they, they keep ringing you I'm not because my son bought a dongle yeah because he's at school, boarding school and he needed access to the internet yeah and I said, oh, of course, darling, you can have a dongle. Right. You know, yes, there's yes. 20 quid for yes. that. And then it was 20 pounds a month. Right. Which okay. is fine if the child, well, he's not a child anymore. Right. You know, if he's getting the service. But the first one didn't work. He sent it back. They sent him another one. It was faulty as well. Oh, no. Well, you're not getting the service. No, no that you shouldn't have to pay that then. But, but you know, Darren, there's, I, there's... I have been sick. Yeah, yeah. And the last thing on your mind is to call up the phone company and say, by the way, this is faulty. Of course, of course. And I'm not paying. And this happened around last April. And then when I cancelled the DD, when I came round from chemo, kind of thing, in November. Then the phone call started. Oh, you've no idea. Mm. You know, you're, you're sitting in hospital. Yeah. You're not having life-saving no. treatment. Um, I'm just I'm, trying to think. Small claims court for this one? No, I can't be bothered. Because life is too short to waste time trying to deal with jobs worth who just yeah, but you've got to be care- got to be careful that that because you don't I want know. one of those credit um uh, Your credit, credit strikes reference. credit strikes yeah whatever yeah, it's called yeah exactly and that's why I just said to them do you know what I just want you people out of my life I don't want anybody in my family or any of my friends to have anything to do with you again yeah and he said well you do realise if you don't pay you know, your credit rating. I said, I am perfectly aware of that. That is why I will agree to pay this month. Dreadful. Um, I will take legal advice. However, let's face it, the only people who make money out of this 
our lawyers. So, oh, anyway, they came back to me. Well, mind you, they left me on hold for 16 minutes, which mm. I think costs at least five pence per minute. Oh. I was just, oh, oh. And then the supervisor came on and pointed out all the things I'd done wrong. And I said, well, hang on a minute. Please let me speak, Mrs. Mrs. M, yeah? And I said, okay. And he went on and on and on. I said, right, can I say something? This call is costing me money. Anyway, he waved us in the end. I, I did I did turn on the tears. Right. So yeah, what what, what happened what happened sometimes. in the end? What happened in the end? Yeah, they've waived the uh, cancellation fee. Right. Have you got, you've got to get that in writing because I'll I tell you what, they've come the back... I've email, that's yeah. why I... Right, you got an, oh, you got an email from them? Yeah. OK, we'll print that off and save it because yeah, they, I, I had a dreadful experience with them about, about 15, 16, 17 years ago. And I've said on the show before, once what? a company... Three? Once a company uh, three years old. And, yeah, once a company annoys me, then, then I'm off. And then, and, yeah. then, and then I would get letters through the post. One telling me, oh, you're £3 something in credit, we'll send you a cheque. No cheque ever arrived. And yeah. then you get another one telling that you owe them 30-odd quid. And then the phone calls, and I just ignored them in the end. I just yeah. ignored them. And I swore I'd never go back with them again. I'd always remember ringing up <coughs> and cancelling this, 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 this thing. Yeah. And they go through to one, through to another. And then the, the last person, this bloke was begging me to stay with them. Or, please, sir, please, will you give me another chance? And I'm like, are you for real? You, yeah. you, you, you get someone annoyed so much, you know, you muck up the service, left, right, and you're sitting there begging me to stay, literally begging me. And I thought, oh, this is this for real? You know, just go away, go away. <laughs> and, of course, you know, I would never, ever... Uh, go with that company again. There's, there's two companies I would never go through again. Yeah. Um, that uh, three, and uh, the other one was Philips. When I was a little boy, I think fourteen or fifteen years old, and something uh. to do with a tape recorder, and um, they wouldn't exchange it or something. Can't uh. remember what was wrong now. Yeah. And I swore I'd never buy another product from them, and I didn't. And that's yeah. it. They can write as many letters as they want to me. I shall never ever put any more money in their pockets. But it's amazing, though, when a company does provide you with a service. Oh, John Lewis. Like O2 John Lewis. did for me. Yeah. Um, I, my phone was getting a bit dodgy, so I rang them up, and I said, I think I might be due for an upgrade. Yeah. And they said, oh, yeah, sure, you are. And then, you know, yada, yada, yada. My daughters were on my contract. They changed them over. Yeah, good. Good. And then, you know, I was due for the upgrade, but I, I, you know, did do a little bit of a... Lovely. <laughs> oh, yeah, them. yeah. And the John Lewis service is always Ill. really good. And do you know what? My phone arrived from O2, and 15 minutes later, a bouquet arrived from O2. Oh. Um, saying, you know, everybody at O2... Wishes you the very best with your recovery. Oh, now, fantastic. Now, that is customer service. Yeah. I mean, the flowers probably cost about 20 quid. Oh, that's but wonderful. I'm never going to go with another network. It doesn't network. matter. It doesn't matter. That's brilliant. That's absolutely yeah, that's brilliant. customer service. And as I say, you know, whenever I've... I've, I've uh, uh, I, don't, I think I've sent one item back and Ronnie sent one item back to John Lewis where there's been a problem. And it's never, ever a problem. You know, yeah. I went in there a couple of weeks ago to buy a little uh, sound thing for my telly, a little bass speaker, you know, blokes, blokes. Yeah. Toys, you know, boys' toys, boys' toys, boys', toys, boys you know. toys. When it went into John Lewis in the sound department, I must have been shown around 30, 40 minutes by this bloke, various different yeah. sound systems, you know, and it wasn't pushed into anything. We didn't rush from one to the other, all at our speed. And, you know, <clears throat> at the end of that little session, I spent £500 with him. Yeah. And went out the hurt place a very happy customer. That's how you talk to people. You go into some of these yeah. shops and they're just not interested. They're yeah. not interested at all. Now, customer service is where it's yeah. at. Yeah. And, you know, the customer is always right. As you are. 
Lovely to talk to you, Mary. Kiss, kiss. All right, God bless. Have Thanks a good for week. calling. Bye-bye, bye bye, Mary. Bye. There we are, Mary, and her bad service there. Oh, what's that? What should we? Oh, your feedback will help us make Skype better. Would that be excellent? I will have a good. Minor problems, hardly notice them. Let's see. Heard noise, there was a delay. A bit of echo, there we are. A bit of echo, that's what we had. All righty. Um, so let's just do this. Oh, oh, thank you to Marge. Marge uh, uh, says um, she will send healing prayers to you, Mary. Okay? Healing prayers to you. So I've got this email. <coughs> From someone who just listens to the show, I did ask last week, does anyone just listen? You know, some people watch on the YouTube and some people listen. If you just want to listen to the show, maybe you're going in a car on a long journey or something like that. Always a good idea to perhaps uh, download the show, stick it on a CD or or one of those um, memory sticks or on your iPhone or iPod or something like that. You can just download the audio and you'll find that at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk that's where you find the audio of the shows going back eight years now and I asked last week does anyone just listen because I think we have now more people that watch than listen I, I only got one email back from this there will be other people who just listen most people don't want to interact believe it or not most people are happy to just either sit there and listen or sit there and watch. Very few people actually will interact with a show, and that goes for all shows, at the professional ones on the BBC or, or you know, talk uh, LBC in London. There'd be loads and loads of people listening, but only one or two that will actually pick up the phone. So I only got one email in from that request, and it says, Hi, Chris. You asked on last Saturday's show if anyone listens rather than watches your show. I do. I listen to it on the way b- into work, or when I'm doing some chores at home. Beats the local radio hands down. Well, you haven't told me where you are. What is your local radio, cat? Which is the local radio where you are? I download it off iTunes and put it on my old iPod, which I can plug into my car radio. Love the show from Cat. So um, uh, thanks for that, Cat. Uh, and yes, you can. Uh, it is available on iTunes. Only the audio version is available on iTunes. OK, just go to iTunes and in the podcast section, type in United Kingdom Talk and you should find the uh, audio version there. There might be some of the old video versions, but uh, generally only the new, um, the new and the old audio versions only are available on iTunes completely free of charge. Okie doke. Um... I was going to say, talking about the storm that we had last Friday, and it was it was really bad, actually. The worst storms, I think, since 1987. I'm surrounded here by big pine trees, and they bend over like that. God knows why one of them didn't come down, you know, because I was expecting one to come down Friday. But I had a range. I, I had a night off Friday. Um, I'm, I'm having a few more nights off. I'll tell you about that in a minute. I had a night off last Friday, and I was going to go down to my ex-girlfriend's pub in, uh, did I tell you this last week, in, oh, where is she now? I think Basingstoke or somewhere like that. But the wind was so bad that I didn't go. And quite honestly, I think I, th- I was glad that I had a night off. This wind started at like about, I don't know, about eight o'clock at night. And it was still going at three o'clock in the morning when I eventually went to bed. So I was glad to, uh, to actually be out of that and not to have to have, to have gone in. You know, uh, got to say hello to Nick, Nick Donaldson, who's been using the Twitter. Not a service I'm I'm fond of Twitter, but I sort of have a little dabble here and a dabble there. I'm more of a Facebook person myself. If you want to join me on Facebook, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. If you join me on there, you get you get a little video every day except Sundays, a brand new short video Monday to Friday. And of course, uh, this 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 show as well goes up on Facebook. My Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. All right, so facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. I've got Twitter as well. The videos go on Twitter as well. My Twitter username is also Chris Reardon UK. Twitter.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right, now, every day, Monday to Friday, we do a little short video. Could be anything, could be funny, could be a bit of news, could be a bit of life, life story, anything. Anything I can think of lasts about two or three minutes usually. All right, the daily short videos as done with a wonderful little Apple iPhone. Where's that gone? Someone's stolen it. Oh, here it is. 
I thought I'd been burgled while I was actually sitting here with you then. And uh, Nick said, I hear, I hear the two princes were in Bark Berkshire last week. Were they near you? Did they drop by for tea? Well, it's funny you should mention that, Nick. I did have a little card in the door saying, sorry you weren't in. We'll try and call back yay later. Harry and Wills. But no one came back later, and I did wonder who that was. Do you think it was the princes? Wanting to visit the studios, you know, you do, you do, I mean, the Queen, you saw the Queen visit the, um, uh, the BBC News 24 studios about a year ago, wasn't it? And I do wonder if any of the royals will ever turn up here, you know, and want a little, little look around this, this, this tiny little studio that I sit in. It's not that big. A lot of people, I've had a couple of people come around. I have had a celebrity here. Oh, yes. Nicky French has been here in the Mirable Studios. What do you mean, who is Nicky French? She represented us for the Eurovision a few, quite a few years ago. Nicky French, wonderful, wonderful, bubbly person. She's such a nice person. She came here. And um, I must tell you, I shouldn't really tell you this, should I? Yes, I'm going to tell you. I must tell you, she, when you come into my house, you come into the kitchen. And I said, do you want to sit down and make you a cup of tea? Well, I pulled this chair out. <laughs> I pulled this chair out from under the table. And the thing is, the cat sits on these chairs, all four of them, all four. I've got a glass table downstairs. And the cat sits on all four of the chairs. And and cat was sitting on, so I shooed her off. Off you get, Katie. She jumped off. Well, I mean, it was it's just dirty. <laughs> and Nikki looked at it. She said, oh, no, I think I'll stay standing, thanks. <laughs> I've got to get some... <laughs> I have put the covers through the... Through the um, uh, through the uh, washing machine on, on on a very hot... On a, like, 90-degree wash. But I can't get that dirt out. I'm going to have to get some new covers for the chairs. On Does anyone want to knock me up some covers for the chairs? I'll find some material. Anyone got a sewing machine? I bet Marge could do it, couldn't you, Marge, in Oklahoma? Long way to send bits of material to be sewn up, though. Mine, I, I, I did look at chair covers. They're so expensive, aren't they? There's only bits of bloody material. Christ almighty, what are you going to do with all these things? Um, and uh, it, it's just, uh, just... My niece said, just get some material, cut it to shape and staple it on. Simple as that. So I must do that at some point. Oh, I mean, well, I mean, the thing is, the cat still sits on there. I could get something to put on, on top of it, though, couldn't I? No. Uh, Simon says, lots of people listening, but not many uh, want to interact. That's what I say on my show when no one contacts me. <laughs> oh, Simon, don't you get any calls? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Maybe next week. Anyway, um, so maybe we'll have a royal visit here sometime. Who knows? Who knows? You know, the Queen or Princess Anne. I quite like her. Although we might have to get the bleep machine for her because I think she swears a lot, doesn't she? Princess Anne. <laughs> I quite like her. I think she's very hard-working royal. Wonderful person. Don't forget, still time to join in if you want to, boys and girls. Uh, my email address, if you want to join me by email, maybe you're watching uh, a recording of the show and you're not with us live, then please, please join in by email. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, if you're with us live and it's just coming up to 10 to 1, on Saturday, the uh, 22nd of February 2014, then you can join in live either by telephone. We have a local London, num local, local London number, 020 8133 is our local London number, OK? 020 8133 is the local London number. Or there is Skype. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's a Skype username, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Marge says, I don't sew. Oh, oh, that's disappointing. You can just remove the material and replace it, which I'm going to do, Marge. <coughs> I'm going to do that, Marge. Wendy says, you've broken a record. Seven million people watching today. I'm very pleased to hear that. 
Good morning. Seven million. That's not bad, is it? For a Saturday afternoon. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, Marge is descended from a lord and lady, are you, Marge? Do you know the Queen? Marge, do you know the Queen? It's funny, actually, sometimes you speak to the Americans and they they do ask you that. Do you know Queen Elizabeth? No, I don't really. Well, I mean, I do. Most most people from England don't, won't know the Queen. I do know her. You know, I've got a special phone here. You know, people often wonder what this, this special phone is for because it's bright red. This is actually a direct line to Buckingham Palace. And sometimes the Queen, you know, she rings up and uh, it's, it's usually usually a, um, a request for help on a recipe or something like that. You know, she says, oh, you know, she might be saying, she says, I'm doing the kids a curry today. Do I need, I, I think I put in too much curry powder. What should I do? And I say, oh, just put in some plain yogurt. Thanks very much, Chris. Do you want anything for that? And I said, no, 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 don't want to, don't take anything from friends. Never, ever take anything from friends. So that, so I do know the Queen. Uh, so Marge is related to a lord and a lady, aren't you, Marge? Oh, I hear? Yes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought we could, you know, just slide easily into it then without saying hello, Marge. Was... But you, did, you didn't pick up on that at all, did you? Not to worry. Good morning, Marge. Good morning. No, I said my um my um my dad. Well, my real dad. Yes. He did uh, ancestry, and I'm supposed to be out of the Lord and Lady. All right. Yes. That side, of course, I'm Native American Patsy. I said those blue bloods. They came across to America and found a red skin. Yeah. <laughs> a red skin. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad to say. You shouldn't say red skin. That's really <laughs> not. Anyway, blue blood and red skin. You know. I you know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I um. Am I coming in pretty well um, or this morning? Yes, good, good, good. Yes, Wendy was saying she was having a bit of trouble with the picture this morning, um, so she could, so it was a, a little bit blurry. But um, she thinks it was her end anyway, so that's okay. Right? When Wendy was just I didn't notice. See, I had to turn it down a little bit because uh, of my yeah. internet. I turned it yeah. to two forty, so uh, I can't really tell if the quality quality's that perfect. But I put it back up and it was fine. I guess I missed it whenever she said said it was fuzzy. Yeah. So. Well, it's getting pretty here. We finally get it. We're getting 70 degrees, which I see. Oh, lovely. 22. Yeah, 22. yeah. <laughs> but I you, mean, beautiful days, did, except for the wind. I, I can't Everything. remember. Did you Did you have the... Um, oh, just a minute. I've I'm being interrupted here. Okay. Yes, dear. Just a minute. Oh, no, no. Stay there, Marge. Stay there, Marge. Good morning, Ron. Yes, dear. Morning. We're just, oh, we're, just, we're just talking to Marge at the moment. If you could wait for that one to oh, finish, then calling because I can only do one at a time. All the operators are off tonight, dear. They're off. So there's only me. So uh, we'll be about 10 minutes, and then you can give us a call in. Back to, uh, have you not got it on then, dear? Ah, well, when you hear Marge finish her lovely call to me, and we finish listening to her wonderful accent, then you call in straight after. Thank you. Bye-bye. Just having to give out the instructions there on the private phone, Marge. Right, um, I was just going to say to you, you, you did get caught up in that very cold weather, though, there, didn't you? It's been like a roller coaster ride yes. here. I mean, it goes extremely cold. I mean, extremely cold. Yeah. And then just a couple of days, it's up to seven, you know, 22, 23, 20. I'm going to do English temperature here. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been like that all winter, but we oh, really yeah. hadn't had, see, like a few years ago, we were down two weeks with uh, all our, our phone line. I mean, sorry, electrical lines, they they were actually broke in half. The electrical the, lines? From, the electrical poles uh, from a yep, yep. Uh, ice. For, for ice the ice weighing down the wires, yeah, I'm with you. The weight yeah, of yeah. the ice and the tree limbs, and we were down two weeks. I mean, I was here in my, my house, my, I live in a camper. Yeah. As you know, and uh, no electricity, no heat, no way to go get to town. The, the roads and everything. <laughs> do, do you have an, a, a, like a portable heater and a, a gas thing or something like that? No. Uh, well, my brother he had a generator. You know, like you, I guess you get generators too. Yeah, yeah. But for me, you know what I what I stayed in was coveralls. Well, they're actually skiing uh, st a skiing suit. Yes. I could go skiing in. They're for like really extremely cold. And I sat in my minivan, my, my Aerostar minivan, and ran the motor, yeah. heated it up, and I watched little 
movies that I had on on a VHS. I yes. have a VHS for yes. the for the van. You know, it runs off of the, the lighter. Cool. I that watched is cold. probably a hundred movies. So and cold. Between that, you know, I, at night I would sleep yeah. in my coveralls under several layers of blankets with my dogs underneath the blankets. Oh, well, they're, they're just like automatic heaters, aren't they, dogs? They're automatic. <laughs> I said, you want to cut one bed, just stick your dog under there. Yeah, And yeah. when you get in, it's nice and warm. Good. I said, that's... <laughs> it, it's, you know, if you got animals, you don't have to worry about freezing to death, you know. <laughs> But it was, it was, I call every time any kind of disaster, this is a mindset I've got. Yeah. When you have yeah. a disaster, just call it a grand adventure. Oh, it's like word. going up on a mountain. Yes. yes. You're going to struggle. Don't, don't stress out over it. Just say, I'm having just a grand adventure. Just carry on like mummy's brave little soldier. <laughs> I asked you about that one of those heaters. Um, my sister and her husband have just bought one of these uh, paraffin heater things. Oh, yeah. Um, because they have, they have very high gas bills. What it is, um, my uh, brother-in-law's mother lives with them, and she has the heating on all the time. I mean, all the time. She has this electric heater on in front of her, and they really use an awful lot of electricity. So they've gone not, out not and, do. So they've bought, gone out and bought one of these paraffin heaters, which they say are much cheaper to run and actually warm up the entire part of the house just one heater they really chuck it out but i worry about something like that that it's going to be dangerous um i know you do get a lot of condensation when using something like that don't you 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 would know that's this. one that's really safe for animals they're a little box and they just they heat up from inside but you can sit on you could put an animal sit on top of it now those <laughs> say i mean they put they only put the heat out in front what, you, put got chicken, lower? you put chickens in a box and sit under, sit on top of them? No, I said it was safe enough that an animal could sit on top. <laughs> I mean, a child or anything, you know, come up, you know how they are, they put their hands. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's one, it heats up these little inside coils somehow. Uh, I don't know what they're called, but, um, uh, but they're very safe. But the only thing is, if you got an open area, like my, my, my camper is not that well yeah. closed off, you know, I've got a lot of places i poke plastic just to keep the wind from blowing through right, so yeah. it takes a long time to heat up the whole room you know but once it keeps it up there then you can kind of maintain it okay. but with my little heater system it just so you reckon has, you reckon they're quite safe the, the the that one i'm talking about is not the one that she's using the now i'm not sure they've got those little plates inside it's not propane or anything is it no, it's. Uh, she said it was paraffin heater. Paraffin. Oh no, they're they don't, they get hot and then they they don't have to keep running electricity. It's the reason they don't use a lot. But right. uh, I don't know if that being safe for little you know animals. Mm. But she don't have little kids. Uh, I mean, does I she? wouldn't like to have petrol or anything like that in the house. No. On the other hand, I'm, you know, I've got gas pipes coming in. So is it any different? I wonder. I don't know. Uh, I'm scared. Of, I'm scared of gas. Mm. I'm just totally scared of gas. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, can't stand. Yeah. Plus, I get allergic reaction somehow. <laughs> I don't know if it's the fumes or the molds or whatever. Yes. Uh, my brother, he bought a propane system. I mean, big, huge propane tank, mm. and he was going to set up me a little propane heater. And then I got the book. I said, "Make sure this doesn't do this, or this is going to be dangerous. Or don't, you yeah. know, safety this, and you have to have an inspector come in." Don't make sure everything's closed. You gotta have a little bit of ventil proper ventilation. Yeah, I looked yeah, at all yeah. that, and then I just shaking all over. I said, "Wait a minute, this thing could go off." Well, and you're you know, shaking all it. over. Well, you're shaking all over. <laughs> yeah, I said this thing goes off, and do you, do, go do you have do you have a dance in your in your in your camper? If you've got a bit of music, <laughs> on? do you have a little bit of a dance? Do you? I bet you do. <laughs> I do. I conduct entire orchestras sometimes in my house. Oh, oh yes. Really? If I've got, like the, uh, in particular, there's a Barry Manilow um, DVD when he was at the O2 and they had the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and I have that on. I've got the sound up and I'm conducting the entire orchestra standing there in a pair of tracky bottoms. Which keep, <laughs> do you know my trousers keep falling down, Marge? It's because well, what's that... happened is I've become pear-shaped. Nothing yeah. will stay up. The only thing is you get a belt and you tighten it and then that hurts. You ought to get I haven't got a waist anymore. Those would be cute. I think that'd be adorable. Big old suspenders <laughs> like they used to have. She ran across your shoulders. Multicolored. I mean, that would be wild. Suspenders. Wild. I never uh, thought, yeah. yeah, we call them something else. Um, what do you call braces, them? Braces. Braces. Trouser you braces. Have, I yeah, never I thought. Cute. What a good idea. <laughs> I must write that down. Yeah, uh, multicolored uh, suspenders. They might come, become a trademark for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Different coloured ones as well. They'll hold your bottom up, you know. And <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, just coming up to one o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. Saturday one o'clock. It's uh, February the twenty second, two thousand and fourteen. Oh, surprise when you're having fun, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Lovely to talk to you, Marge. You're looking yeah, wonderful. I... I love that picture of you. I know you're not actually there. It's, you've superimposed it. There's a picture of you <clears throat> and, let me think, there's a planet behind you and plants yeah. and trees. That's a wonderful picture you've got there, Marge. Because the meaning behind that picture is, I'm not of this world. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> Have a lovely day, Marge. Thanks so much for calling in, darling. Bless you. Lovely to talk to you. Bye-bye, Marge. There we are, Marge in uh, Oklahoma, USA. It's wonderful, wonderful to talk to that lady. <coughs> Excuse me, it is. Um, Rick, good morning to Rick, who's in Pittsburgh, USA. You're with us live today, Rick, aren't you? Uh, so thanks for joining us live. Oh, why am I holding this phone to my ear? There's no one calling in. Um, Rick wants to know, what is my favourite tea flavour? Um, I don't, don't drink flavoured tea, Rick. Uh, I just drink normal uh, black leaf tea, okay? In Starbucks, I think it's called Wake Me Up, Tezo Wake Me Up Tea or something like that, all right? That's the tea I generally have uh, when I'm in the States. Here, I like Twining's English Breakfast Tea. OK, Twining's English breakfast tea available, of course, from our favourite supermarket, Waitrose. Waitrose. Oh, good morning, Ron. Oh, oh morning, look so, who it is. Um, it's my best friend, Ron, calling in. So I was just listening to your, uh, to your little hobby radio and thinking... Oh, sorry. Sorry, I just, just oh. test-toned you out then. Did you hear that? Uh -huh. You became boring, so automatically a tone came over your voice to stop people falling asleep. Oh, OK. Well, I was just, I was just listening... Oh. Dear me, there it goes again. Sorry? Oh, I was just listening to your little hobby radio. And, um, Wait, uh, you know, Mike was saying hobby. about the cold over there. It, it was quite cold in your house the past couple of days. Oh. Luckily, you did put the heating on for one hour. Yes. In the 48 hours that I was there. Wait, which was for you. I didn't want the I heating on. You're, you are all hot, <clears throat> dear. You are it's all not cold. Hot. It's not cold, Ron. It's, oh, look it, at me well, now. You know, it's not cold in it. I'm sitting here now with... Um, with a, uh, a jumper on in the studio, which admittedly is hotter than the rest of the house because of, of course, all the, all the television studio lights in here and the computers and things going on everywhere. You know, it really is very, very much like the newsroom at BBC News 24 in this room, isn't it? <laughs> It really is. I love the bit at the beginning, you know, where the camera pans across all these type, not typewriters, all these, um, all these computers the is, and people. If you were to, if you were to pan around that room, you'd see two umbrellas, two two rain umbrellas with lights underneath them, dear. But um, anyway, as I was saying, you're yeah, talking about my room, two house. rain umbrellas with lights underneath them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was quite chilly. You're not in your supposed house, to but, tell um, people. It, I, I'm ringing. I'm actually ringing. I'm actually ringing to say thank you very much. I did thoroughly enjoy the, the couple of days that we spent together. We had a very nice time. I did miss my cats. Yes. I did miss my cats in the bed. Of course you missed I did the cats. Miss them. You could have... Oh, no, you can't borrow Katie in the house, can you? No. <sighs> no, it's a shame. But, you know, <clears throat> it, it was. A, I had a very, very lovely time. And um, I was just ringing to say thank you live on air to all of the three people that are listening. Uh, there's, at the moment, there's five million. It's five million. Five. Five. Well, it says five, five viewers, but I don't think they put the noughts on. No, they do put. They they, they would put the noughts on if there was. It's funny. Since you started talking, there were seven. Yeah. There was so now it's now it's five. Isn't that funny? Oh, oh, oh. Maybe they fall. Maybe they fallen asleep listening to you yes. for the last hour. We had a nice dinner, didn't we? We had that. that um, we had yes. <clears throat> although Very I must, nice I, I accidentally gave you chilies. You don't like anything spicy, do you? No, no, I'm not a spicy person. Not oh. a spicy person at all, dear. Very plain. Plain Jane super plain. Yes. That's How was me. work last night? It was very good, dear. It was very good. Have a nice so... time, Sue. Yes. How was, how was your evening? Very good night. Yeah, we had uh, Cabaret on, and um, well, they cleared out quite early. It started going about two o'clock. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But yeah, it was all right last night. I got really tired. I, I keep, this keeps happening now. I'm getting very, very tired on the, um, on the three o'clock jobs. It's, it, but it's, oh, it's to do with your age. Really, really tired. But um, yeah. got night off tomorrow, so there we are. 
Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. I've what are you going to do? Are you going I've out? I've got Tommy Hilfiger jumper on today. Are you going yeah. out tomorrow night? Uh, I'm going to my ex-girlfriend's pub. Oh, yes. Yeah, course. down Basingstoke. Miss, Miss, Fiona. Fiona. Miss Fiona. Miss Fiona. Little Fiona. My first yeah. love. There <laughs> goes my first love. Da, da, what, da, da, what, what, what decade was that in, dear? That must have been all the, the 60s. 40s. There goes the my 40s? first love by the Drifters. When do you know that but, one? No, I'm talking about... Oh! Your, 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 your Ron, first Ron, love Ron, 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 Ron. Were you with me at the beginning of the show or not? No. Guess what has arrived in the post? What did you? What arrived in the post? Five Barry Manilow tickets. Oh wow! You must be very excited. They're all here. There's, there's oh fabulous! There's one Are you going show... to lock them in the safe? Huh? You're going to lock them in the safe? Going to Wembley? To steal going them. to Wembley? 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 I wonder if he's <laughs> seen that one on his show. Oh dear, you are a very funny yeah. person. One's dear. at Wembley and one's at the O2. There's uh, one, one I'm taking two people and one I'm taking one person. So two oh, aunts, two aunts, and Tracy. But it depends well, where, just, oh, where the baby comes. You see. Oh, I just wanted to ring in and say that I've been listening to the show and uh, thank you for the couple of days. And uh, maybe I'll see you a bit later or maybe tomorrow. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yes, I'll try and pop well, up a bit later. We'll see what the time is, because I have to have my dinner and everything, dear. Oh, I know, dear. And you've got to try and see. You haven't, you haven't got any editors, have you? So you have to edit the show yourself. I've got to do almost... It's all a one-man... Sh- I've always been a bit of a one-man show, haven't I, you see? Yeah, one-man band, dear. One-man one man band. band. All you need is a ukulele and a, bu- and a drum on your back. <laughs> 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 oh, I fixed my tambourine. Hang on a minute, where oh. is it? Oh, if people won't know. If you don't watch my short videos, you won't know about this. But I was so disappointed this week, I broke my tambourine. And the way I broke, I was I was taking the car into the garage, uh, into, in, uh, parking the car in my garage. And um, uh, I have a, a bag of little bits and pieces, you know, book, uh, song books and uh, instruments for my um, karaoke nights. And... The bag must have fallen over and I drove over it and I broke my tambourine of about 26 or 27 years old. I was so disheartened. And Ron said, this is the bloke on the phone now, why don't you just buy a new one? Well, I've ordered a new one, but it's not the same. This has got so much history, Ron. So much history. Yeah, I understand that. I, I have understand fixed that, it. It is just a tambourine. I have fixed it with Yoohoo Glue. It's fabulous. So, can okay. you sing a song for me? Can you sing me some? Well, I'll maybe I'll speak to you a bit later, dear. Can you sing me a song so I can play along to it, please? Um, I, I, I can't sing, dear. You know I'm tone deaf. Yeah, you're right. I have seen you doing karaoke at uh, Cookies Karaoke. Thank you. Okay. okay. Well, I'll can you tell him I later, mentioned dear. that so I get Thank five pounds? Thank you for pounds. taking my call. Thank you. Thank you. you bye have bye. A nice, nice to meet you. I'll speak to you later. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. So lovely to talk to him. Honestly, these people ring in while you're trying to make a fu- while you're trying to do a show, interfering like that. It does annoy me when he rings in like that. Uh, Rick, Rick says it was "There Goes My Baby" by the Drifters. Thank you very much, Rick. Yes, um, Rick likes Earl Grey tea. Now I don't like that, as Captain Picard has on Star Trek The Next Generation and various films. I'm not keen on Earl Grey tea, to be honest. And it's like a perfumey, very... I'm not keen on that at all, Rick. Um, but yes, we all like our own tea. My brother-in-law likes that um, herbal tea. You know, orange and mandarin. Oh, I just don't get... It. It's not tea to me. It's not tea. Tea is black leaf tea of some sort. Earl Grey is tea. You know, you can't have, like, <laughs> different... different Tasting teas of orange tea and all that. What's all that about, eh? Anyway, so here's my here's my tambourine. All fixed. And I do take this to my karaoke nights if someone's singing a song. Uh, let me think. Um, Mamma Mia is a good one. I don't bring it... So you, when you're doing these karaoke, you've got all these instruments. You mustn't use them on every song. Then you lose the effect. Do you see what I mean? So you bring them out on, on various different songs. Uh, this one definitely comes out... One of the songs was Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia... As I go again, Mama, how can I resist you, Mama Mia? Yes, that's it. Uh, or have I gone out of focus? Sorry, Marge, I, I might have gone out of focus if something's, something's gone a little bit wrong there. But we're nearly finished now, Marge, so stay with us. Stay with us. Uh, 
One more email then today. Also, I meant to tell you, I've got Sundays off at the moment. Uh, my Sunday job finished, and I'm actually enjoying it having the Sunday off. I also have occasional Fridays off as well now. As you know, I've uh, been a seven seven night a week worker for for many many years, and I'm enjoying my night off. I'm. I I I I I feel. Like, at 51 now, maybe it's start time to wind down a little bit. At least from going out to work. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy all my jobs. Love love doing what I do. But I do get tired, especially on the late night ones, the three o'clock finishes. And I think it's time to perhaps start winding down a little bit. Perhaps you got to that point years ago or or you're just coming up to it, are you? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, I've been careful with my money over the years, so I can afford now to drop a couple of nights here and a couple of nights there. Um, and so so that, that's it. You know, tomorrow I'm off, going down to um, uh, my, my ex-girlfriend's pub, going to have a little chat at with her while I'm down there. And all things like that that I couldn't do. Last Sunday I was I just stayed in. Stayed in and watched loads of television and and enjoyed it. I think it's time to start kind of winding down a little bit more, not not doing so much, you know. Uh, the feet. I'm, I meant to bring up the subject of my feet. Still having trouble with my feet. It's coming up to a year now, so I'm actually going back down the foot specialists on Tuesday next week to see what the next step is, because the insoles that I've had made don't really seem to be doing anything. Uh, Rick, incidentally, sent me a message last week <clears throat> when he saw the picture of the broken tambourine I put on Facebook. Uh, and he he sent me a picture of a broken trombone. It was just flattened, obviously, where someone had driven over it. A lot dearer to buy a new trombone, I think. Um, uh, <laughs> than it is to buy a new tambourine. New tambourine only costs about ten quid. Nice, I've got another star one coming from Amazon. Wonderful, one click ordering. We love one click ordering. Finally, on the show today, then. Um, Let's say hello to James, who's kindly sent this email in. Oh, hang on a minute. No, sorry. There's a there's an email here as well. I beg your pardon. Vicky Gannon. Vicky Gannon. I haven't heard from you for ages, Vicky. It's been over a year, possibly longer. And yes, I do remember you, just in case you're wondering. Of course I remember you. I remember all our regular correspondence. Vicky writes in, uh, glad to hear you've been surviving the storms. I was worried about you. I've started to catch up on shows that I have missed. I missed the first part of your show this morning. I hope Katie is continuing to feel better. Yes, she is. Best wishes to you from uh, 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 Vicky. Marge has the right attitude. A grand adventure. Yes, that's right, Vicky. And Vicky, I hope you like the new look of the studio now. We've got lovely blue, bright blue behind us. It was actually Marge that pushed me into that. She's always looking a bit dark in there. Dark and scary. You know, very witch-like. <laughs> I've still got this ambition of becoming a Disney witch. <laughs> I would like to become a Disney witch at some point. So thanks for that, Vicky. And it's lovely to hear from you. I was actually in New York a year ago, Vicky. I was there. Um, Wendy says back, are you still on or have you finished? No, I'm, we're still here, Vicky. We're, sorry, we're still here. Still on at the moment, Wendy. Still on at the moment. All right. Uh, James sends in an email. Doesn't time fly fast when you're talking about your age? Yes. Yes, time... Time now flies incredibly fast. Incredibly fast. It made me think on how long I've been listening to your show, and it must be now four years... And it only seems like yesterday. Have you been able to put up with this for four years? <laughs> I tell you what, I'm going to come back to that in a second. All right, I'll come back to that email in a second uh, because Rick's just calling in uh, from the US. Hello, Rick. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? Oh, I'm just fabulous. Now, you've got a squashed trombone. Tell us what happened to yours. A did um what happened was it was in the intermission of one of our concerts and um the riser that i was sitting on had actually had not been the safety catches hadn't been put on right 
and um, somehow it got knocked under the riser, and the riser collapsed on top of it. Oh, my word. And I was still on top of the riser, too. I mean, because they, they look fairly solid instruments to me, you know. To, oh, to, to, well, you know, when, when you've got, like, a 500-pound riser collapsing on top of it, it yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that was the end of that. <laughs> no, actually, it's... It, I got it fixed, and it's good as new. Oh, you can get it... What, what do they do, then? Do they, they bang it out or put a new bit on, or what? Well, they could put a new bell on, They, but what they did was they actually just um, took out all the, the dents and all the wrinkles out of it. Right. Using... Um, well, they did, they did do some hammering, but they also have a machine that actually just smooths it out. And Oh, okay. And is that a very expensive thing to do? It depends, but uh, the company paid for it because it was on, it was during performance and it was... Fair enough, yeah. yeah. Tell me, how much... Oh, Wendy says she likes your accent. She's swooning, <laughs> swooning. She likes your accent. Okay. <laughs> So does my wife, but... <laughs> Tell us, how much is, is, is a trombone to purchase? Is that a fairly expensive instrument? Um, the top-of-the-line instruments, the custom-made ones, you're talking about $10,000. $10,000, okay. Would, would that be something um, that someone in a big orchestra, would they have one of those? Or would they have something out of a shop, or what? Well, <clears throat> the, fu the funny thing is, you could buy... Just your I don't know, middle of the road professional quality instrument yes. for you know maybe like twenty five hundred dollars and then hand it to a trusted repairman yes. who could actually customize it for you for a lot less. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, but it's kind of funny. Some of the symphony people that I know, instead of having to buy them because of you know what orchestra they're playing in or not, yeah, they um. They actually get. They actually are given their instruments because you know they. Um, the one trombonist here in Pittsburgh actually had one built for him by a very large corporation. Yeah. And um, he designed it himself. They built it to his specifications, and he spent nothing on it. They gave it to him. Yes. Wow. They, they gave him like two or three of them. But so the, the the average person that would be perhaps playing in an orchestra, what what would they be spending on a trombone? Oh, between twenty five and five thousand dollars. About five thousand dollars, and that would yeah. that would get you a very high quality thing. Yeah. Do, do, do Yamaha make those? Yes, actually, that's the thing. yeah, actually, yeah, uh, they're, they're well yeah. known. I've got a Yamaha piano downstairs. It's thirteen years old. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. professional. I just go down there and have a little play with it now and again and um uh, but very happy with it and you know it's all electric you just plug it in you turn it on it never goes out of tune wonderful wonderful yeah i good quality stuff yeah yeah it is <laughs> mm. but um <laughs> the funny thing about that was um i had my backup horn and i had just got my the backup instrument yes like, two days before the the uh, sh the concert Oh, well, so, that was lucky. Oh. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> well, you got your backup instrument now. Yeah. Lovely yeah, to talk to you, Rick. Love the story. Right, <clears throat> Stay in touch, all right? Bye-bye, Rick. Thanks for calling. All right. There we are. Wonderful. Right. We'll just do this uh, email now from James because it's coming up to 20 past one, isn't it? A long show today we've done. Um... James was saying, as twi uh, Twitter, I find rather confusing. Oh, I do as well. I don't really use Twitter. I, I, I use Twitter to advertise the fact that I'm doing a show or I've done a video or where I'm working. I don't really talk to people on Twitter. <clears throat> I've never quite understood it and don't find it engaging at all, Twitter. I think it's very, very overrated. But I am on it, as you know. Uh, as for Twitter, it can be confusing sometimes. It can also be useful. I've used Twitter recently to complain about the shocking service I received from a mobile phone company. And it helped get the matter resolved, as they didn't want to know until I took to Twitter to complain. Yes, because, of course, when you go on Twitter and you go on Facebook, <clears throat> um, lots of people can see it, can't they? 
When you send a company an email, it's only you and them. No one's seen it. So they can see you complaining, right? And then they want to be seen by other people to, to answer your game. So I bet you, I bet they answered on your wall. They didn't do it as a private message, did they? So that other people would see they're trying to sort it out. Interestingly, this week, I decided to advertise <coughs> on Google AdWords. Two of the videos. One of the short ones and one of the live ones. And I was getting very, very confused by this. And I put this on the Facebook wall that I was getting very confused by the Google AdWords. Um, and it's a shame, you know, I had a little bit of money to spend. Not a lot. Just a small bit of money to spend. Just advertising the videos to see what happened, basically. And I couldn't work it out. Well, blow me down. Um, my YouTube is linked to my Google AdWords. And so they have your phone number and things like that, if, if you've given it to them, which indeed I have. Blow me down. Two days later, a phone call from Google AdWords. Hello, is that Chris? Yeah. Oh, hello, it's so-and-so from Google AdWords. Um, I gather you've been trying to have, uh, having problems working out. Um, can we see if we can help you at all? How fantastic is that? So it does work. Using social media, Facebook, Twitter, something like that, to complain, although it wasn't, was it a complaint? Well, it was, yeah, it was a complaint. <clears throat> to complain for whatever reason, in my case, that I couldn't work out what I was doing. It does actually work. And then they rang me. Very impressed. Very impressed. Anyway, so the ad has gone on. Right? What a huge difference it's made. Right, let me just go. We don't worry too much about numbers, but it is nice to get your, to get your name around a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Now, where's my, where's my Firefox? Oh, there it is. Right. Let me just tell you. Generally, on one of these shows, the live long shows, when they go up as a recording, OK, generally there'd be somewhere between 60 and 100 people watch the recording afterwards, OK? With last week's show, I created a little advert that goes on some of the other YouTube things. You may have seen it, you may not have seen it. It goes before other people's shows, you see. It's one of those ads that come up and you can skip it if you want to. One ad has made this difference. Last week's show was watched by 1,277 people so far, instead of 100. What a massive difference. And similarly, I did one for a short show. OK? The short show... I selected was one I did about a hoover, OK, because I bought a new hoover. And I'd done the show, wrote a little song. It was quite comical. I thought it was comical as well. Generally, the short videos have more viewers than the long ones. Generally between sort of 80, 120, 130. Right? Put the little advert on. How many people think? So far, 3,493. Just by putting a short video on. And these adverts cost me 50 quid, 5 0, 50 pounds. And I can, because I'm self employed, a DJ, I can write these down as tax deductible items. So it's part of the business. You see what I mean? So it really does work. There were people that told me not to bother with AdWords, complete waste of time, and all that. I think uh, I've proved you rather wise. Thank you for the advice, but do you know what I mean? So it was worth doing. Just, just thought I'd share that with you. So when you complain about things on Twitter or Facebook, you know, companies get to see them. They don't want to be seen as bad and not taking any notice of anyone. So it is worth doing, I think. It really is worth doing, all right? Doing it. James says, I hope you haven't been flooded out. I've seen the news that Berkshire has been affected. Yes, not, not near me, fortunately. It seems terrible, the rain, and I hope there isn't any more. Well, it's a beautiful day, so we've had a couple of really nice days. The sun's out. It's, it's not freezing cold. It's mild. Barely had the heating on, as Ronnie told you earlier in the phone call. Hope that Katie gets over our problems. Well, she has. She's, she's much better now, thank you. <clears throat> um, 
He says, when he was in Glasgow, did you go to the Barrows Market? It's quite good there. I've heard that they build... That I heard about... No, no I don't, don't know the Barrows Market. I've heard about these Build-A-Bear shops you mentioned. They seem to be becoming quite popular, but it's not cheap to get one of those bears. No, it's not. Beware. They are very good. Is my, my bear that my nephew and sister built me a couple of years ago at a Build-A-Bear the shop. They're very good. And you can spend some time in there, you know, part of your day out going and buying these things. Uh, but they are expensive. They can work out expensive. Once you buy shoes and jeans and all these other bits, it works out to about 40 quid a bear. You probably go, go and get one from the pound shop, you know. <laughs> um also, you were talking about listening to the podcast only. I do listen to the audio only podcast sometimes if I'm really busy as I can listen on the go. I've listened to your last two audio podcasts on the go as I've been that busy from James. So uh, thank you very much for that, James. Uh, nice to hear from you. All right, boys and girls. Uh, oh, Wendy, what do you want to say, Wendy? We'll finish off with one message. Uh, Wendy says, how cool is that, the numbers? That is so worth £50. Oh, absolutely. And the thing is, Wendy, it's you can then with the YouTube. I don't, I don't know if you I don't usually go on about statistics. I don't really show much interest in them, but you can do all sorts of things and you can find out where these people are. And generally. How long they listened for or watched, OK? Um, I'm just trying to find the. Where are they? Is that demographics, is it? I don't know. No. Do you know, I can't find it now. View reports, views, is it views? Uh, there we are, I found it. Okay. So, just to wrap it up today, by taking that advert out, usually we get a lot of people in the States, the UK, and a couple of others. Where do you think the top amount of views was on last week's show? Believe it or not, Mexico. Mexico. So, if there's anyone Mexican watching today, hello. You're very quiet. I haven't had an email or anything from Mexico. You're trying to work out why. 107 views. The average view duration, though, was only nine minutes. OK, so for an hour show, they watched nine minutes. But averages are very, very misleading sometimes. Because you might have one person watching for a minute and one person and, and, and a load of people watching for 60 minutes. Do you see what I mean? So you can't really go by averages. So views, top viewers, Mexico. Second in the list. Russia. 78 people watched in Russia. 70 people in the Ukraine. 67 in Argentina. 66 in Romania. 56 in Egypt. 54 in the Philippines. Only 46 in the UK. And it goes on. Um, the USA. 12. Only 12 people in the USA. Isn't that strange? And they really are all over. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, 7, look, 30, 40. They're all over the place. Two people in Barbados watch this show. Isn't it weird? There's a couple of really long averages. Here it is. Two people in Finland watch it. Average time, half an hour. In Finland. And it's interesting to see this. It really is interesting. One person in Guam. Where the hell is Guam? I don't know. But whoever it was, watched it for the whole show. One hour and five minutes. Isn't it? In, it so fascinates me to find people all over the world. I had no idea. And you really don't when you're sitting here doing something... And I know there's lots of people out there that want to have a go at this. Lots of young people. Oh, I wouldn't be any good at it. How do you know? You must try it. I put this on my Facebook this week. 
the wonderful thing about the internet, specifically YouTube, and also the many, many thousands of internet radio stations, is that anyone now can do it. You haven't got to worry about going to a radio station and having to fit in to their oh-so-important playlist. The way they do things, you don't need to do that. YouTube. Want to be a TV star? Come on, let's be honest. We're, we sit here, we, we do feel sort of like we're minor celebrities, don't we? But the fact is, most of us, including me, would never get on normal television or perhaps normal radio. It's just not possible for us to all do that. And I also think there's an awful lot of luck involved in most of it. You've got to know someone to, to get in there, so to speak. If you don't know anyone, that's the way it goes. And I, 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 know, I know people who have been on big radio stations... And I've said to them, you know, I do this internet radio, do you think? And, and they say, Chris, you're better off doing what you want. You're unrestricted. You can say what you want. You can do what you want. You haven't got to worry about things. Carry on doing what you're doing. You'll be a lot happier. You know, people that have been on, on stations and, and, and become very disillusioned very quickly because you have to fit into a, uh, to a format. I don't have to fit into a format. Look at the little videos that I do every day. That, that you, can, you can turn on. You can't expect to see something funny, something about the news, something about my personal life, something just about life in general. You don't know what's going to happen next. Element of surprise almost. Might be boring tomorrow. Might be quite funny the next day. You never know. Whereas with radio, you turn on all these stations, heart and all that business, it's the same old crap time and time again, isn't it? How many times do you want to hear the same record? And that's the beauty of internet, radio, and YouTube. I, I love it. I love it. How lucky are we that we're now able to do this? And please, if you want to have a go, then just bloody well go out and do it. Just do it. Don't worry about numbers. I've never worried about numbers. I would like to have a few more people, so I took out a little ad, and it worked. I can't believe how many countries... I'm now watching this, sometimes only for a couple of minutes, and I guarantee, I guarantee there will be some people watching this in other countries to try and learn English. The BBC is a wonderful, wonderful service, and people learn English from that, listening to that. But I think the BBC English, certainly on the world service, is a specific type of English. It's very perfect, you know. Do many people on the street actually speak in the same way as Hugh Edwards, who reads the news? I doubt it. He's reading you... Um, he's almost making a speech. Whereas I like to think I'm having a conversation with you. Even when there's no one on the phone, I still feel that I'm having a conversation with you. All right, that's it for me today, boys and girls. I was just glancing across then. So you, you'll see me, those of you that watch the show, you'll see me glance from left to right. There's two computer screens in front of me. One up comes the message and the other one over here tells me that everything's working all right. So that's, and there's another one over there which records the sound. Uh, that's why I glance from side to side somewhere. And, oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I'm... I nearly, my head nearly fell off. That's it today, boys and girls. Now, don't forget, uh, sign up to YouTube uh, for the... Uh, 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 sub subscribe to my YouTube channel, Chris Reardon UK, all right? YouTube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Just click on the subscribe button whenever there's a new YouTube uh, tune there. Either the short or the long videos, they are all on that particular channel, OK? YouTube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Hit subscribe on there. Uh, the long show... You can find every week at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Both the video and the audio are there for you, OK? unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And my email address, once again, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Time to go now, boys and girls. I'm looking forward to a little karaoke night down in Shepherd's Bush in Hammersmith uh, uh, at the uh, Lorry Arms 
on the Saturday night if you're around the area. 90 or 1, free entry. It's a lovely um, Irish pub. I, I love it in there, actually. And we set up in the sort of uh, uh, glass, what's it, conservatory. And that's, that's all well and good. Uh, so time to go. I'll see you again uh, next Saturday if you're around, boys and girls, at 12 o'clock UK time, OK? Live show every Saturday at 12 o'clock UK time. Have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye now.